have an interesting Hendershot experiment to show you. Um, I have a traditional buzzer here connected. Uh, this one has uh, two bobbin coils uh, that are wired in such a way that uh, you, uh, with a certain polarity you get like a north pole and a south pole. I'm not exactly sure why uh, buzzer manufacturers decided to do that. Maybe it causes a better leveraging. Um, but anyway, so I'm hooking this up uh, in such a way that it's just a buzzer, but the uh, when the uh, when this connection goes down like this, there's no power any longer to the coil from the from the battery. I'm going to supply power to, from the battery, and so the back EMF from the coils is going to go back into this Hendershot circuit. Now I found something that I don't quite understand, um, but let me explain this setup. Uh, so it's, instead of uh, having a neon as a as a load, I um, wired up to a bridge rectifier over to a capacitor. So this is um, basically a line filter converting to DC, and then onto my small little uh, motor here. Now um, when I hook up this battery here, there's not enough power to run the motor, and that's uh, sort of a function of uh, the rate that this thing buzzes at and the uh, the, um, the frequency that uh, that um, this Hendershot circuit or half of this Hendershot circuit uh, tunes for. Um, so I'll show you that first. So with, with this load on here and the capacitor, uh, the AC voltage is about 1.2 volts and the motor's not spinning. Okay, so now the weird thing is, uh, if I apply pressure to this um, buzzer while it's running, uh, the voltage increases, the power increases, and the motor starts spinning. And let me show you that. something started smoking here. Uh, these bobbins are very, very hot. Um, so it, it got into a state where this was actually pretty much touching the metal here and not really, uh, not really, the magnetism was just holding it here. And uh, this uh, clapper or whatever you call it uh, was just arcing, uh, creating a spark here at a very high uh, frequency, um, which could be a function of this Hendershot coil. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why applying pressure to this would do that other than it's sort of bending the metal and possibly mechanically changing this. Um, uh, I'm not barefoot, so I'm not, it's not because I'm grounding it per se, but maybe I should try it again by pushing it with something that's insulated like this plastic. So I'll try again. Weird, weird. Okay, so um, it's definitely something mechanical happening, some kind of tweaking to this thing. Maybe a side view. sideways here. I'm going to try just holding this here and see if it does it. It doesn't, there's, uh, it doesn't do it when I hold. Oh, it's 
It's doing it now with no pressure applied. It's not enough to uh, spin the motor. Oh, there we go. Voltage went up. So let's go over to the scope here and see what's happening. This is the voltage coming into the bridge rectifier on the AC side. Uh, 5 volts per division, so it's 7 volts or so. And this is what's occurring on the tank circuit. And these are very, uh, this is um, 2 volts per division. So these are very nice spikes coming in, into the tank circuit here. The frequency, the uh, the seconds per division is one is a uh, one millisecond per division. Try a magnet here. So if I put it too close, it's dropping down again. I find that sweet spot. Um, now remember, I'm powering this with a battery, but uh, this is um, pretty interesting uh, I, because the relay is not really even um, buzzing in the normal way. It's just sort of arcing here. Um, I, I've been playing around with this for a few days and have, ha hadn't noticed that before, um, but this was with a 12-volt battery. Um, I am able to make this buzzer go at a much lower voltage, 1.5 volts here. This is not an, as impressive uh, and it's stuck, really stuck, there we go, magnet is making it stick here. <laughs> 